What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today what I want to do is initialize our Git project. We're going to put the WP test WordPress directory itself into version control. By using Git, we're going to be able to track any changes. We'll be able to use branches to change up some experimental code. We'll be able to merge changes into our main project. There's going to be a lot of things that we could do. But this video is going to be basically just initializing our project, adding our basic files. We're going to be using git ignore and also git attributes. All right, so if you want to support the project, WordPress theme development with DevWP, head on over to pixelweb.com, WordPress themes, and consider making a purchase of DevWP. I put in thousands of hours into this project and years of experience in terms of creating a highly efficient and productive workflow. You can also check out some of our other videos and see how we started off with a basic workflow and advanced into a more efficient and productive way of creating WordPress themes. All right, so let's go back to VS Code. All right, so we see we have our WP test folder opened up. I'll go into terminal. I'm going to see what I currently have listed here. All right, so the first thing I want to do is create a couple of files. So I'm going to type out the command touch. And again, this is via terminal dot git ignore space and then dot git attributes. Now these are two files that we're going to be utilizing to work and manage the way we handle these projects. So now we see we have both those files. Type out the command start dot git ignore. And as long as VS Code is the editor you have chosen to handle these projects or these files, it'll open up within your editor itself. You could also use that and that's our git attributes file. All right, so what I'll do now is I'm going to paste in my code and I'll explain to you what's taking place. All right, so this is what I have in my git ignore file. What you see here at the pound sign, those are comments. That's not going to be processed. But what we're doing is we're ignoring some of these files and folders. I'm ignoring the query monitor because of the way I code on both Windows and Mac OS. The way it's handled is better for me not to actually track this folder. Then I'm making sure I don't track some of the icons and the thumbnails created by Mac OS or Windows. And then I'm ignoring all files and directories that start with a period or any of these symbols. And I'm telling Git that I do want to track these files and this folder. We're going to create this folder later on. And I also want to ignore these files. Now a lot of people do track these and it's often the best practice to track it. But for my purposes, I like to make sure everything's working with the latest version of these different dependency managers like Composer and Node.js and NPM. I'm also ignoring the log files and I'm ignoring the node modules that will be created with Node.js and NPM. And right here, matter of fact, I'll copy this. Or I'll just change it right now because we're going to change the name later on. But for now, I'll save it to underscores. Basically, we're going to be making sure we don't track the vendor folder that's created by Composer. But let's actually check something out real quick because I know sometimes there might be a vendor folder that some themes create. So I want to see if this one has it and this does not. Okay, so good. All right, so we're not going to be tracking the vendor folder that Composer creates there. So that's our git ignore file. Now for our git attributes file, I'll paste in my code for that as well. Basically what this is doing is setting the default behavior for how git is to handle some of our files and how it treats it. We want to make sure that all images are treated as binary. We're going to be using end of line. It's going to be set to Linux. And then we're going to declare the text files that will always be normalized and converted to the native line endings on checkout. So just copy this code right here into your .git attributes file, and then copy this code into your .git ignore file. All right, so now what we could do is open up our terminal, and I'll type out the command git init, and it created a git repository for this project itself. So now we're going to be tracking it, and if we type out git status, we see all the files that are currently untracked, and the folders themselves. So I'm going to type out git add, and the asterisk, so we can track all of these but we're going to commit them. Hit enter. And now it's going to start the process of tracking all of these files and folders. But it's also going to take into consideration the rules that we have in our git ignore file. And actually what I want to do, let me stop this. Show you we have the dot git folder there. I'm going to remove that for a second with the remove space dash r for recursive and f for force. I'm going to remove the git folder. So now that's gone. What I'm going to do is change directories into the themes folder, into underscores, 
you see we have a git folder here as well. So it's gonna be treated as a submodule. Projects that are being currently maintained, you would wanna add it as a submodule. But since underscores is not being currently maintained, it's been several years since it's been worked on, we no longer need to track it. So I'm going to use the same command, rm for remove, dash rf dot git, and also the github folder as well. So we're gonna remove both those folders themselves, the dot git and dot github. We'll leave the dot git ignore file here because I'll take a look at what's in there. But for now, let's remove these so they won't be treated as a submodule. So now you see they're no longer there. All right, so let's go back to the roots of our folder. You see we don't have git there either. So I'll type out git in it again, and it won't treat it as a subfolder or a submodule. So git status, git add, asterisk, enter. We'll start the process of tracking what needs to be tracked. And again, it's respecting the rules within our git ignore file. Part of what you see here is the warning that in the working copy, the Windows line endings will be replaced with the Linux line endings. Once that's done, you can type out git status again. And now you see all of those are green. We could also git add dot git attributes and dot git ignore, hit enter, git status. And now everything's being tracked. So now what we do is we type out git commit dash m for message, single quotation marks. And inside that, I'll say first commit, then hit enter. And then we can type out git status. And now you see you're on your master branch and there's nothing to commit, you're working on a clean tree. You could also type out git branch to see what branches you have. Currently we only have the master branch and in another video I'll show you how to create additional branches. But in this one I just wanted to show you how to initialize your project, how to use git ignore and git attributes. So now if we go to, and we're going to um, open up our composer file itself and now if we change anything, it's gonna show that it's modified. So let's change something here. Let's change this to seven, four, save it. And you see now that VS Code is notifying you that you have a modified file and you could commit it from here with your message. We're not gonna do that. We'll just change that. And if you go back to the way it was before, you now see it's no longer modified. So it's tracking the files. In the next video, we're gonna be changing up the composer file itself to bring it up to speed make it more updated. And again, if you want to support this project, head on over to pixelweb.com. You can purchase a copy of DevWP. And in there, you get all the documentation and the files and the folders and a major jumpstart on how you develop themes. And you can also check out some of my other videos. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. I just wanted to give you a rundown of how to initialize your project, how to use git ignore, and how to use git attributes, how to track all your files and how to commit them to Git version control. All right, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon, and I'll catch you in the next video. Happy coding.